today's demonstration sewing machine video for Stagecoach Road Sewing is of this lovely Nelco. Look at that rose beige color and the incredible detailing on this chrome, which follows through onto the back plate with this beautiful pattern here. The machine does have some dings in the bed. It's been used, but not used hard. Machines of this type were very popular in the 1950s and early 60s. You'll find these in a lot of different colors and, and uh, configurations on the chrome there, but they all have the same basic features. They're really wonderful, solid, simple machines to sew on. Now this one doesn't have a light, however on its motor block there is a place to plug one in, or you can just bring any old desk lamp over, or you could order one of those special sewing machine lamps that goes onto the back plate here. So we don't have a lamp on this one. You can also see there's a lot of space under here. You'll want to mount this in a cabinet or a case. You can certainly sew with it like this, but keep your hands, fabric, scissors, small animals out from under it when it's running. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is thread a bobbin. This is a standard class 15 bobbin uh, used by a lot of singer machines, brother, lots of them. Go into your sewing machine store, look for class 15. Goes like that. And then around this little bell here, it's a little tension for the bobbin winder. Now if you've run a sewing machine before, push this down, click. You know that we have to undo the clutch knob in the center so this part of the machine doesn't go while we're winding a bobbin. Just turn it backwards, wind your bobbin. I'm not going to wind the full bobbin here, but when you do, it will automatically shut off there. Tighten your clutch knob back up to get the machine engaged. Now let's finish threading the bobbin and put the bobbin in its bobbin case. There's a lot of sewing machines that work just the same way. You might already be familiar with this. Hold the bobbin in your left hand, bobbin case in your left hand, excuse me, bobbin in your right, with the thread coming off away from you. Put it in the bobbin case. Grab that tail, lead it through the little slit in the middle there, under the flat spring, until you hear a little click, it's coming out like that. Then we're going to put it in here. This is called the shuttle and race assembly. It's the part that picks up the thread from the top. And click that bobbin case in there. There's a spindle for it to go on. Close the door. Now we'll thread the top of the machine. Get right up here. And look at this neat feature. The spool pin is hinged and it folds down. So when you put it into a cabinet or a case, there's room. Okay, put your thread on there. And let me remind you, don't use cheap thread. You won't get a good stitch. Some good stuff. A little notch right here that we want to go through. Right there. And then this is the tension assembly. Lots of knobs here. There's two little washers that are shaped like plates that stick together. Boom, boom, boom. That's what actually gives your thread its tension. So you want to get between those, pull up over that, that. If the thread feels a little tight when you're pulling through, make sure this is all the way up. When that's down, ooh, there's your tension. A lot of you don't know how that works. That loosens your tension so you can pull your thread through. Through that eye, through this eye, this machine, and you put your needle in, the flat side faces in, which means the machine threads this way. Let's see, thread the needle. Yes, first try, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Turning the hand wheel towards you on this model, raise your lower thread. There it is. Put your threads to the back. Let's try some sewing. This is a bottom weight fabric, a cotton, lightweight cotton canvas. 
Let's just put two layers of that in, like this. Stitch length over here. Reverse, forward, and there's a little indicator window to show you if you want to lock it at a certain number of stitches per inch. You can do that. Okay, let's sew a seam. You can go really slow. This machine, really precise. Turn a nice little corner there. And the back side. Beautiful tension. Same on the top as the bottom. Can we go fast? Sure. Let's have a little bit shorter stitch though so we don't run out of fabric. Put it on 12. show you that nice stitch quality there, front and back, very well balanced. Okay, let's fold this lightweight canvas into, oh, how many layers do I got there? One, two, three, four, five, six. We've just got a basic size 14 all-purpose needle in here. And always remember to hold your threads when you start. That, not a problem to the end here where this fabric was doubled over already because it's the hem off some old skirt. So that's going to give us 12 layers of lightweight cotton canvas. Right over the top. And back. Not a problem at all. This great Melco. Now you can also, say you've got a little hole in the middle of your fabric here and you want to darn that up. Releasing the pressure on the foot turning the feed, dropping the feed. Now if you do free motion quilting or darning, the ability to drop the feed and slack the pressure, you can move the fabric any way you want. So if you're doing machine embroidery, darning, free motion quilting, having the ability to drop the feed without covering it, that. you could even put a real darning foot on there. Now this Nelco is a low shank machine. When you're thinking of buying attachments, you'll be wanting to look for a low shank, which is a common singer size. Look at that, free motion, even tension on top and bottom. So really excellent machine for quilting and that sort of artistic stuff or just mending a hole in the jeans. Don't forget to put the feed back up and the pressure back about the middle ready for regular sewing again. So here it is, this beautiful Nelco rose beige sewing machine with a few dings, but a good, strong, quiet sewer. Class 15 bobbin, regular size Singer or Schmetz needles. Have a good day.